Hey everybody, Captain Foley with you today. Um, we're going to be doing our review of Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, today. This is one of my favorite movies. A lot of people are going to give me static for that, but I really enjoy it. Uh, mainly because it was directed by Shatner, I think. It's very Kirk intensive and it shows a lot of Kirk's personality. And I kind of like that. I like Kirk. He's one of my favorite characters, aside from this old girl, the Enterprise. And uh, <clears throat> it does have its faults, obviously. They all Star Trek movies do, and I'm going to go through those. But overall, it's one of my favorite movies to watch. It's very reminiscent of an early episode uh, from the original series, much like Whom Gods Destroy when they find Apollo, um, along those veins. So it's, I like it, um, but yeah, it does have issues, and we'll get to that. First thing I want to do, though, um, a few people have commented on my PS3 theme here with the Enterprise cruising around and the planets going by, little desired collectors swirling. There's actually another one that I just promised to show somebody, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, select that now and get that out of the way. Theme settings. Okay. So here's another one in the series. There's two that I know of. I have them both, and I love them to death. They're my favorite themes. So <clears throat> let's get underway with this movie, shall we? Now, I know a lot of people, this is rated among their least favorite. <clears throat> and there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, William Shatner directed it. A lot of people point that out ad nauseum. Um, but I'll tell you one thing, he's still better than J.J., uh, because he at least knows the material. And I'm going to get a lot of J.J. static for that, but whatever. Also, this movie has one of my favorite bridges of all time. Um, let's see. They also went with a different uh, video effects company for this movie, instead of ILM. And it shows. I mean, it's not all bad effects. They're pretty good. Uh, there's a few points that I'll bring up about those also that they're just they might not be the best but <clears throat> they're not the worst either and at least the Enterprise looks like the Enterprise and it's amazing <clears throat> so I don't want to hear any static about JJ okay he's a great director and talented guy but he shouldn't have been handed the reins of Star Trek that's my firm belief you ain't gonna change my mind so don't even bother trying and I'm going to get to his movies eventually. There's good points and bad points about his movie, just like these ones. Okay, and I'm going to go through all that. I want to be devil's advocate and show that I don't really have favorites or I don't hate J.J. There's just a lot of issues with his movies, way more so than with these ones. It's one of my favorite menu screens, too, for this collection of DVDs. It's another reason I like this one. So, and like I've said in other videos, I've done all the movies up, motion picture right up through to five now. So if you haven't seen those, check those out. Um, I'm going to add this one to the uh, playlist uh, of all my movie reviews. So check those out. And I am the biggest Trekkie you would ever want to meet. So don't say that I hate Star Trek because I, there's certain things I make fun of. There's certain errors I point out. You can't like something if you can't make fun of it. Or if you can't pick it apart and just because I pick JJ stuff apart people give me static for that but I also pick the original track apart because it has its flaws and we're going to keep that in mind as we go along with this series not everything is perfect not even real track In my last video for Star Trek IV, I pointed this guy out. He was in the control room uh, on Earth when uh, the power went out. This bald guy, he had pointy ears. He was one. He was uh, with Admiral Cartwright. I pointed him on the last video, so check that out so that you know what I'm talking about. This is him again in this movie. He plays one of Cybok's men. And that's one of the things I like about Star Trek II is that they recycle their actors. So every time you watch an episode... You see an actor, you're like, ah, I know him from something else. And you gotta, like, either IMDb it, 
or it's it's a good game to play with a significant other that is into Trek. You know, what what other characters did they play? Sometimes it's hard because of the makeup. It's hard to tell uh, who was who. So yeah, it's it's really a fun kind of inside Star Trek game to play to guess the actor. But yeah, this guy was definitely in Star Trek IV. Another thing I really like about this movie, it's very down to earth. It shows kind of what they do in their off time, their downtime. You don't really get to see that in Star Trek. They're like always on the ship, they're always on the bridge, and if they are taking time off, it's usually, you know, shore leave uh, on some planet, some space station. So you never really get to see what they're like, who they are, what they enjoy. That's what I really like about this movie. I don't know why people give it so much static. This movie is amazing for characters and uh, uh, character relationships. Um, the trifecta we have with Spock, Bones, and McCoy is beautifully done in this movie. Um, most of the characters have significant roles, like Star Trek IV. Uh, they kind of get, get a chance to shine. A lot of people generalize things and this is just it's directed by Shatner it's a bad movie and you don't take the time to actually take it apart piece by piece scene by scene and actually look at what they're trying to do and that's got to be done more often um, yeah I don't know what to say I just this is it's one of my favorite movies and everybody's gonna give me static for that and I don't know why there's, either, there's some people that, I don't know, with this movie you either hate it or you love it. I don't think there's very much in between with this one. Um, I just happen to love it. So, shoot me. Um, it's definitely above the motion picture. I, I have to come up with a ranking system for my the movies. As I watch them, it kind of changes in my head sometimes. So, maybe at the end of this video series I'll just do a recap of all the movies and kind of give you my most the one that I most like to watch to the least want to watch because I love them all even JJ's I saw the first JJ movie seven times in the theater just for all you JJ haters out there or JJ lovers out there sorry when I bash JJ I saw the first one seven times in the theater I enjoy it as an action sci-fi adventure it's awesome Star Trek nah could be better could always be better And of course, McCoy. Being McCoy. I, I love McCoy. And of course, Spock shows up in a second with the jet boots on. Um, This scene here, you can tell it was done on a sound stage and that they're hanging horizontally because all the branches on the trees are doing this towards the rock. So you can tell that he's on a harness horizontal and all the trees are put this way because all the branches are falling towards the, the ground or towards the rock face in this case. Um, something's always bugged me. Like I said, I've watched these all as a kid. So I have a kid's perspective on a lot of things. I noticed things when I was a kid that I probably wouldn't notice as an adult. And I'd like to point those out also. This is before the next generation. Well, I don't know if this is before the next generation or not. But anyway, we got a sexy little Romulan here without the forehead and the V's that the next generation put on their Romulans. This is a hot little Romulan hottie. You know what I'm saying? And of course, you got the three breasted cat woman. <laughs> you can tell Shatner did this, yeah? Yeah. And here she is, Caitlin Dar. Oh. And of course, he is in the next movie, Star Trek VI. He plays Gorgon, the, the cha Klingon Chancellor. So, 
keeping the tradition of re recycling their actors. And of course, the city is called Paradise City, so every time I hear Guns N' Roses, take me down to Paradise City with it. Yeah. There I go singing again. Every video, it seems, I end up singing. I hate singing in public. But since it's just, you know, you and me, just the camera and me, I feel comfortable. I won't be dancing, though. Well, I kind of do dance in some of the videos. Inhibition's gone when it's just me and an iPad. And of course, we got introduced to the Enterprise A in the end of the last movie. Put together by monkeys. Find him, but half the doors won't open. And guess whose job it is to make it right. That's because they rushed development of it. Um, and this bridge? I love this bridge. It's one of my favorite uh, Enterprise bridges. Which I'm also going to get static for from a lot of you guys, I'm sure. But I like the look. It's a slick look. The fuck? This makes me scratch my head about as much as uh, Ahura and Spock in the JJ movies. It's just kind of like a last minute added thing, like this relationship between these two. But whatever, I mean, it is what it is. Oh, the panels, I love this look. The blue and green um, with the black panels, all touchscreen. That's my idea of a slick computer setup. Next generation with the oranges and the yellows and the, you know, not really my thing. But then there's also the, uh, see, I like the way they did the computers. The original series had the red, white, or the red and yellow, the very bright colors flashing. And then, of course, they went to this in the movies, and then the next generation developed a little bit into different colors. Sequential. And then Enterprise even added to that by having their computers be the same color as the TOS ones. And you can argue and you can complain that Enterprise never happened. I agree with you 100%. It fucked up the timeline. There was no NX-01. But just think of it as an alternate universe. Maybe the beginning of the JJ-verse. It's just an alternate dimension, ultimate or an alternate universe, something like that. Accept it for what it is. Just watch it. It's a good, good series. I'm not 100% happy with it because it is true up the timeline, but... So look, the sun's come out. It's a miracle. I love it. The helmsman got lost. This scene, the campfire scene, is awesome. This shows their relationship. Like I said in the last video, we haven't really seen a lot of interplay between these three. Especially McCoy and Spock. So this scene makes me happy. Um... So, as I said in my last video, in the motion picture, there was no real interplay between McCoy and Spock. In Star Trek 2, they didn't even have a scene together. In Star Trek 3, Spock was dead. In Star Trek 4, they had their banter going back and forth again, which was the original series, and it made me happy. And that's one of the reasons that Star Trek 4, I think, was so successful. This, we have it again, and I love it. It's what makes Star Trek Star Trek for me, is these three core characters and their uh, back and forth. Sorry, blocking Kirk. He's the most important guy. Come on now. Whiskey. And I love how after, you know, Spock's Kotcher was in McCoy, since then Spock has kind of like a human, kind of has a little bit of McCoy's personality, McCoy's humor. You really see it in the next movie, Star Trek VI, and I'll point that out as well. But it's interesting the way that he's kind of changed and become more humanized because of 
McCoy holding his Katra. No, when I die, I'll die alone. I've always known. I'll die alone. A lot of people give guff to that saying too, because oh, he died with the card with him. Are you fucking new? He doesn't have his boys with him. He doesn't have Spock and McCoy. That's why he was alone. He could have been with fifty other people from the next generation. He would have still been alone. He was out of place out of time and he was alone essentially in Star Trek Generations so he did die alone and ever since this movie comes out every time I eat marshmallows I call them marshmallows you know you can actually get that marshmallow dispenser it was a giveaway a few years ago. I forget where, but you can actually find them uh, at conventions and stuff. They hold a few marshmallows, and they, like, come up. So the kids, my kids don't understand why I call them marshmallows. But, uh, anyway, they're marshmallows. And I don't know how you can be a true Star Trek fan and not enjoy at least the scene from this movie. Uh, just... I don't want to keep saying it, but the interplay between these characters is awesome. And to see it on the big screen, very cool. So I think Shatner did quite a few things right in this movie. He also did a few JJ-esque theme thing, things, but uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. There's one of the other Voyager probes that wasn't so lucky as to be rescued by an alien race and repaired so that it could go home. Instead, it gets picked off by a badass punk Klingon. And where is the spotlight on the shuttlecraft? I've looked at the shuttlecraft. I've built shuttlecraft. There's no spotlight on it. When you see it take off and fly away later, where is the spotlight coming from? Conveniently, yet again, the transporters are not working. See, spotlight. And when it flies away, well, I guess those lights under there could be a spotlight ish thing. Maybe just the middle one was on really bright. Who knows? Now that I've taken a better look at it, it's possible that there was a spotlight there. So, sorry. This scene's cool. In front of the moon? Love it. So far, I don't see any problems with the special effects in this movie. And I pointed these out in Star Trek, the motion picture. These little flashy lights that go back and forth. Also, Star Trek 2, I pointed them out. Uh, they gotta do something. These little lights go back and forth. I love how that's in every science fiction movie. They make fun of it in Airplane 2 with William Chatner. It's like, these lights, they go back and forth. They gotta do something. Find out what they do. Just kind of funny. And this scene coming up. With the old turbo lifts, you can see when they were going up and sideways. Up, 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 They were in the shuttle bay. They're still going straight up. That is supposed to indicate direction of movement. Now, as we all know, the turbo shafts in this ship. From the shuttle bay, you'd probably go up one or two decks and then straight across the whole length of the secondary hull to the neck, to the dorsal connector, go up, go over, and then go up again to the bridge. So there should have been some up, sideways, up, sideways, up to that movement. To have that go up, 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 up. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's just flashing lights. It doesn't mean anything. It actually does, especially in the original series. 
so logically this should may also be the same way uh so that's one mistake right there that i'm not very and again i'll say it again i like this bridge that is actually william shatner's daughter he had no idea that she was going to be on set that day so it was kind of interesting that his daughter was the one that was the omen that day so i guess there's no sexual harassment on the bridge this particular day And that is uh, producer Harv Bennett, who, when he started the Star Trek franchise, didn't know anything about Star Trek, wasn't a Star Trek fan, much like J.J. However, Harv Bennett had enough sense to realize that you don't screw with something as precious as Star Trek, because they have very dedicated fans. Harv Bennett learned about Star Trek and did a great job in uh, making sure that Star Trek's vision remained true to itself. And of course, Kirk says, well, surely, oh, here we go. With all due respect, the Enterprise is a disaster. There must be other ships in the plot. Other ships, yes. For once, for once in Star Trek history, there's other ships in the quadrant. But this time, we need Captain Kirk. Directed by Shatner, do you think? I kind of like it, though, because... Kirk is Kirk. This is just a cool little scene. I miss my old chair. And the look on Spock's face is awesome. Oh. It's cool to see the Captain's Log book. It's actually a book, which is cool. I want one. Maybe one that works a bit better than that, but I want one. I love it with the emblem on there. Enterprise. There's his daughter again. I should look and see if they, have, if they have a prop of that that you can buy because I think that'd be cool to own one of those. The scene coming up where Chekhov speaks to Cybok. So then Captain Pavel Chekhov. You know, I don't know if Cybok would know this, but if you know, he still has his commander bars on. He doesn't have his uh, uh, captain's bar on. Cybok might not know the difference, so I, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But uh, he's still got his commander bars on. I checked for that, actually, because I thought maybe he'd switch them up. See? Commander bars. Now, I've never really found Uhura attractive. I'm sure a lot of people do. But at this point, she's like 50 plus. So, the only reaction I have to this whole thing is... I mean, I guess she doesn't... The silhouette doesn't look bad for her age. And... In the future, I'm sure that people that are 60 are still in top shape, condition-wise, but still, damn. I love the one guy when he gets, when they pull the phases out of him, ah, oh, damn. Hold your horse, Captain. I'm scanning. I love the humor in this one. That's what I mean. Like, that's what a lot of Star Trek movies are missing is humor. And I think I think Shatner did a great job. I don't care what anybody says. And of course, and of course, any movie with Kirk Fu, awesome. Kirk Fu fighting is the best kind of fighting. I wish I could master Kirk Fu bunch of double axe handles to the back of the neck, some drop kicks, you know. 
and the Vulcan neck pinch works on horses apparently. Meh. And of course, Kirk has to tangle with the three breasted lady. Apparently he's freaking super strong or she's super light because he like lifts her up and like chucks her into like the pool table, which is literally a pool table because it's got water on the surface. It's a pool on a table. Oh, watch this. He, like picks her up and like chucks her. Like the fuck? Was he on steroids? What's going on with that? Either that or the cat woman has like hollow bones. So like she's really light. I don't know. I really like these away team outfits. I, I think they're very cool looking. I used to have a sweater like that. Like a military type sweater with the shoulder pads. Uh, I like those, that design. I should actually make up a costume like that for my next Star Trek convention. Noel, my friend Noel, if you're watching... That's what you need. I think you were working on one of these, weren't you? You were just looking for the boots. But yeah, definitely a cool outfit. One of my favorites. Beautiful shot of the Enterprise. The effects in this aren't that bad. I don't know why everybody gives them static. Once again, another cool shot. I also love how every uh, Bird of Prey bridge is different. They're actually customized for their captains. So it's kind of cool that way. Uh, like I stated in an earlier video, I do have the Klingon Bird of Prey um, Haynes Workshop Manual, which talks about the Birds of Prey in detail. And yeah, they're, they have customized bridges for their captains, which is kind of cool. So they're never, well, I don't know if there's two the same or not, but... This scene's kind of eh, with the shuttle, looks kind of fake. But I never noticed this before, but on his armband there, instead of their years of service, like they have on uh, the way suits on Star Trek 2, he's got his captain's bars on his uh, sleeve there. I never noticed that before. Just a little something. I love this, how it's just like on an aircraft carrier. If the uh, F-14 or whatever doesn't the uh, resting cable with the with the hook they have the emergency barricade there to stop them from that's kind of cool and this is neat so they're estimating the new course uh, arrival which is the galactic center I might add Six point seven hours at present speed of warp seven. This is like the JJ verse, where they can get from Earth to Kronos and back in one day. It would take weeks at like high warp to get to the edge of Klingon controlled territory. But anyway, so these guys are going to the Galactic Center in six hours. No, it would take a lot longer than that. This is where this movie and JJ's movie have something in common. Can't believe I just said that. Anyhow. I just realized I made a mistake earlier in this video when I said uh, Whom Gods Destroy for the uh, one with Apollo. Sorry, that was, it's actually Who Mourns, Who Mourns for Adonis. Uh, I got the, the title mixed up and I apologize. I know a lot of you are going to freak out. You probably already commented on it to correct me on it. And I... I realized it after the fact. I'm not great with the episode titles per se, but I know uh, I know the uh, content anyway. And the jailbreak is pretty much awesome. The thing that confuses me is there's a whole ship full of Starfleet personnel. It's not like they're a skeleton crew. It's not like Star Trek Three where there's just the five of them. So. 
Why is no one storming the bridge? Why are we just... Oh, Cybok's in charge now. Okay, that's cool. Our captain's in the brig? Sweet. There must be a reason for that. And... For Ahura and Sulu not to tell Cybok to go find Scotty, you wouldn't want Scotty running around the ship. Unless, of course, they had... They were hoping that he's going to free them. These are very inconveniently placed in a corridor, don't you think? Don't you think you could have just moved them up? If you need to run through there in an emergency situation, that's just kind of very dangerous, don't you think? the corridor? I'm going to rewind because you got to see the corridor. That's definitely an Enterprise D corridor. They didn't even bother changing the set dressings at all. That's a Galaxy Class corridor. And this scene is full of things that piss me off. This is a turbo lift shaft. Fair enough. Pretty big fucking turbo lift, first of all. Look at the size of it. Must be a cargo turbo lift. Well, no, I guess it's all right. Here we go, jumping over the obstacles. Oh, look, there's Scotty. Climbing, climbing, climbing. Climbing, climbing. Look at that. Deck 12. We'll get into that in a second. Good thing Kirk started the movie off climbing El Capitan, eh? He's got practice. McCoy looks a little winded. Where's Spock? You can see the support holding him. The shadow of it. Where, how did he get up all these decks to come down to them? Did he take another turbo lift somewhere? It's kind of sketchy. Folks, you two go ahead. I'll wait for the next stop. We're not splitting up. And it is funny, this scene, but at the same time, you can see clearly what's going on with what's supporting him. Okay, here we go. Watch. Deck 52. Deck 64. Deck 52. Deck 78. Deck 78 again. USS Enterprise, NCC 1701A deck plans. the decks are listed there a through U. if you guys don't know that the number of decks to go to U is 21 there's a number of maximum number of 21 decks on this ship where are they getting deck 78 from that's another JJ verse error that's JJ quality era error even the Enterprise D doesn't have 78 decks so that's always bugged the shit out of me. And the fact that they passed the same one a few times, that's just bad editing. And it's a bad director, Shatner. It's bad. And her English is amazingly good. So yeah, 21 decks on that ship, not 78. And you can't pass the same deck a couple times. He must have went to the JJ School of Direction. And something else I forgot to mention, but I'll point it out now. Uh, the deck numbers start at the bridge, with the bridge being deck one, and they go down. So they go down to deck 21. They're climbing up, and the uh, deck numbers are going up. 
it's not right. You don't number a starship from the bottom to the top. It's from the top to the bottom. So I just want to point that out. And how does Cybox power work? Um, a lot of people have said, oh, well, it's in their minds. Well, it's not because Kirk and uh, Spock can see it also. So how does it work? Did he do this for Uhura and for Sulu as well? Did they have this epiphany of their their fear? They faced it. Was it visual like this? Was it tangible? Could they touch it? How does it work exactly? I understand the kind of getting into your mind and use reliving it in your mind and seeing it that way, but for Kirk and Spock to be able to see it as well, I don't know. I don't understand how this works exactly. Here again with Spock's vision. Kirk can clearly see it. It's not in his mind. So is that the galactic barrier? Which they've gone through once before. In the very first episode where no man has gone before. So we know we can get through it already. I don't know why they're freaking out so much. Also, it's changed appearance quite a bit since then. Now it looks like ink with lightning. In the original series, it was like purple. But anyway, so we got to the center of the galaxy really goddamn quick. I'm not going to draw comparisons to JJ, but just throwing that out there. That was a really quick trip. For the convenience of the story, uh, so, you know. boldly go where no man has gone before. That was kind of a cool little touch. Even though they've already been here before, in the episode where no man has gone before. Maybe he was making reference to that. They haven't been to this planet, but they've transversed the Great Barrier. This just sort of reminds me of the motion picture where I called it where Nomad had gone before. This is basically the story of Nomad and from the Changeling, just in movie picture form. Now this is very, very, very similar to Who Mourns for Adonis, uh, a strange power source that seems to emanate from the planet. There's going to be a structure you see soon, and then a godlike creature in the middle who, well, hasn't really been to Earth like Apollo had, but thinks that they're God. So I understand it's hard to get new material for these kind of things, but that's... I, I like this movie. I love these phasers, by the way. These phasers are pretty cool. You see these again in Star Trek VI. But um, anyway, like I was saying, it's it's the throwback to the episodes, that kind of writing that I enjoy. That's why I like Star Trek IV so much, because it's very much an original series episode uh, feel to it. That's cool the way they're all lined up, too. Different. See, that's good directing right there. See? Shatner's not all that bad. He's got some cool shot ideas, some great ideas. You know what I'm saying? So. Who is supplying this footage? Did they strap a GoPro onto the side of the shuttle? Is it the sensor from the shuttle sending the information? The sensor from the Enterprise, maybe. Maybe it's God sending that, that that feed to them. Or this alien, sorry, not God. But you know what I mean? Where do they get this footage that they can see this? It's like watching Arena. Arena made sense though, because you had the Metrons, which were providing the, the footage that the Enterprise crew was watching. You don't got the Metrons here. So, what does Kirk say here? have a, a non-situation. There's nothing going on. Cybok feels like a fool. And my god, it's hot down here. Like, what is Kirk saying right now? We have a situation because we don't. And by now he's off his freaking communicator. So what did he say exactly? Enterprise, we have a 
Never mind, never mind, we're good. And damn, this almost sucked. Just missed the ship. That's a cool shot of the ship in orbit. Why does God look like Santa Claus? Excuse me. It's one of my favorite Star Trek movie lines. I just have a question. What does God need with this starship? This is... Don't you know, aren't you God? ID. That's very much an original series episode writing there. Ow, -y. Now, if you notice, he doesn't only have a uh, char mark on the front of his uniform, also the back. That went straight through him. That's gotta hurt. Same spot, straight through. Got a scorch mark on the front and the back. And what's more, when Kirk stands up, his scorch mark is still smoking. See? Still smoking. Ow! And I think the scriptwriters went on strike, because listen to what Kirk says. He never finishes his goddamn communications. Kirk to Enterprise, listen carefully. And now he's just staring. Uh, we're going to have a problem in a minute. Like, why are these half-finished sentences going on? Come on, Shatner, you can direct better than that. And if you watched my last video about Star Trek IV, you know about my problem with the transporter. It's like Star Trek 4. They only had minimal power, so enough to beam out one of them. So only Uhura could be beamed off the aircraft carrier. Check off, they didn't get him in time. He got captured and almost died. And then this conveniently happens. One of those happenstance transporter incidents where it's either convenient or inconvenient, depending on the plot. But it's always inconvenient for the characters. It's always convenient for the plot. Pain in the ass. Like I said in the last video, if they're that unreliable, I don't know if I want to be taking the goddamn things every day. I don't know what you guys think about that, but really? I remember watching this scene as a kid and remembering what Kirk said earlier. I always know I'll die alone. And I'm like, oh my god, McCoy and Bo or Bones and Spock aren't with him. He's going to die. But they are. They're, they're just up on the ship. They're formulating a rescue plan. But as a kid, I was like, oh my god, Kirk's going to die. Oh my god, oh my god. Being a kid, tell me. One of the funniest lines in Star Trek history is coming up in a second. Very Star Trek moment, especially with music. Please, Captain, not in front of the Klingons. I love it. Oh, 
awesome Star Trek moment. And that scene is cool. Come on, you gotta admit, that's good. Her hair is very, very phallic-y, don't you think? Kind of gives some sexual innuendos there. She has wonderful muscles. <laughs> Kirk. I lost a brother once. You lost your brother Sam to the neuroparasite. wrong. Kirk even admits he was wrong in a movie directed by Kirk. Yeah, but he, he lost a brother Sam to the neuroparasites. That's what I was thought he was talking about at first. I lost a brother once. Glad I got him back. That's Spock. Whatever. Whatever. What about your real brother? So there you have it, guys. My review, my thoughts, my blabberings on Star Trek V. One of my favorite movies. Especially the beginning. Half of it is really good. The second half, not so much. So I can see why people don't like it. But at the same time, I'm a huge Kirk fan. And William Shatner, I think, did a fantastic job of bringing out Kirk's personality in this movie. So, hate me if you like, but uh, I'm a fan of this movie. So, in conclusion, we're going to be uh, doing Star Trek VI next. The Undiscovered Country. One of the best Star Trek films ever made. Um, the last full feature with the entire original crew and a great send off to the original crew series so that'll be next once again guys check out my other videos I, I'm gonna have uh, this in a playlist so that you can check all, out all the other ones all the other movies I reviewed and I will talk to you very soon I still have to finish up my Enterprise C to put in the decals on it for my model building uh, viewers out there so be sure to check that out as well. I'll probably be doing that later today or tomorrow or tonight and have the video up possibly tomorrow. We're going to see. Um, but yeah, definitely. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Like and subscribe to my channel. Suggest me to anybody that likes Star Trek. And uh, I will talk to you in the, ver in the very near future. This is Captain Foley signing off. Live long and prosper. Bye.